and get a snow core. Every day, hundreds of snow measurements are taken across the United States, but there are vast areas that cannot be reached by weather observers. That is where the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Twin Otter Aircraft comes into play. The mission? Snow survey. Iowa's News Now got an exclusive ride along with the mission to measure the snowpack across northeast Iowa. Are you ready to go? Ready again. Thank you, ready to go. This mission will be a four hour trip. We'll be collecting data over areas the River Flood Forecast Center would like to know more about. Twin Otter Noah 46 Flying Cloud Tower, wind 3106, right to a left over takeoff, left turn approved. The 2020 snow survey mission is still in its early stages, with nearly 2,000 lines that need to be surveyed. And with good weather in the forecast, we're on our way to help with the 2020 flood forecast. Well, 46, 5,300, climbing 5,500 VFR. After departing Flying Cloud Airport just southwest of Minneapolis, our 30-minute jaunt to the southwest corner of Minnesota will give the two-person crew time to dial in their instruments and make their plan of attack. So the machine at the back, back of the plane attack, figures out the amount of water quantity in the snowpack in terms of what's called snow water equivalent, or SWE. Um, and so what we're going to do today is we're going to fly over a series of survey lines, flight lines in Minnesota and Iowa, try to get an idea of what the snow is looking like there, and um, send that information upon landing to the National Weather Service. They're going to use that to predict uh, spring flood predictions and uh, snow melt predictions for later down season. The first survey line will be just southeast of Rochester, Minnesota, along Interstate 90. Prior to flying each survey line, the mission commander will go over a summary of the flight path for safety reasons. We'll be just south of I-90. Couple towers at the beginning, 300 footers, 265, 315, all lower than our level. To get accurate data, the NOAA crew needs to fly lower than aircraft are typically allowed to operate, and that requires a special waiver. At 500 feet, communication towers and wind turbines are just some of the obstacles the pilot needs to be aware of. Looking good. Kind of see how the highway straightens out up there in front of you, two lanes. You see his scan and he's looking inside, outside, fighting for 500 feet of the ground, trying to keep that airspeed well safely within the limits. That ground speed at 100, 120 knots. The Twin Otter aircraft is used for a variety of missions over land and sea. The complicated flight patterns needed for snow survey require more experienced crew members. The flying is a little bit more dynamic, it's a little more challenging. Um, the software is a little more dynamic and a little more challenging as well. Um, so we send, tend to send our best people out here for this project. Depending how close the survey lines are to each other, the crew can hit 10 to 15 per flight and up to about 30 a day. Collecting the data is a rather simple process, which is done from the front seat of the aircraft. We just did line Minnesota 416. On that line, there were 7.1 centimeters of snow water equivalent. So 7.1 centimeters of water effectively averaged across that line. There are many more lines across the upper Midwest, which will be tackled in the weeks ahead. Missions like this keep the 10 to 15 NOAA pilots out for a long duration of time throughout the year. All the snow up here is eventually going to melt in the spring. Um, the more information we can tell the Weather Service about what the status is, because it's just us out here, you know, we're, we're the ones looking around at the, at the features, what the snow is doing, giving them the data, and they can make their, their flood predictions from there.